Take your Bible. Turn to, almost knock the orange off here. My wife would come out and get me if I did that. Turn to 1 Peter chapter 2 if you would. 1 Peter 2, we're going to be in uh, about three places in the scripture. And whatever I put on the screen, I want you to, I want you to have your Bible open to it. And I want you to, number one, always make sure that what I'm saying is from the Word of God, number one. Uh, number two, make sure that what I put up there is King James. You never know, I might just trick you all one day. I don't think I will. <laughs> all right, but anyway, just have your Bibles open there and let's read it from the Scriptures, all right? And y'all pray for me, it's just been a, a, just a gloom day today. And um, I'm, just, I'm just real tired, and um, I don't know if I just need some rest or what, but, or maybe I just need some more Bible. I don't know. But I've tried to be diligent about studying today and uh, visiting with some people and so on. And so you pray for me tonight, all right? 1 Peter chapter 2. Pray and pray for the families in New York, Okay. New York City that lost eight people died yesterday because some idiot in a false, stupid religion that has no business being in our country. Okay, I don't care if there's four of you here tonight. Amen. That religion has no business in our country. This is a free country. And yes, people can practice whatever religion they want. But if you want to come over here and practice that style of it, you can just go back to wherever you came from and leave us alone. If you think that your God is so great that he has to convert people at the point of a gun, you're an idiot. Amen? First Peter chapter 2. I might just end up being mean tonight, and that's about it. First Peter chapter 2, verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. Why is he saying that? In that because uh, First Peter chapter 2. We have a... We are born again, we are citizens of heaven, and yet we are also called to be citizens here on this earth. So we are strangers in that we are estranged from this world. We're going to leave this world one of these days. We are pilgrims in that we are seeking a better country than what we have down here. If we lose what we have down here, we still can gain heaven. Amen? I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. Number one. Abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Very important. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, they are warring against your soul and they seek to... Dis your flesh is going to kill your soul. So your choice is either your flesh kills your soul or your soul, being right with God, crucifies the flesh. Amen? So abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. And then verse 12. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. That's very simple. It means that as we are down here on this earth, make sure that what everybody knows about you is that you are a child of God and that when you deal with people down here, you deal with them honestly. People are, lost people are tired of church people taking advantage of them, church people lying to them, church people not being honest with them, or church people thinking that they're better than they are, or whatever. And, and he says, abstain from those fleshly lusts, and have your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation." So, you can't always stop people from saying things about you, especially nowadays in the online world. Um, somebody told me the other day, Pastor, there's, there's a guy out there, he said something about you in a video, and, and I'm going, okay. Well, you know, you, well, you know, we ought to know what he said. I said, well, I don't really care what he said. Okay? Here's the thing. If he's right about me, then he should say something. 
If I'm wrong in something and somebody picked up on that and he's right about it, then he should say something. If he's wrong about what he said about me or if he's wrong about the issue, then it's not going to hurt me what he says because all people have to do is come back and listen to what I said and then they can decide who's right and who's wrong. Amen? And I found out in the online world there is no such thing as bad publicity. I found it out. And I've told this story before, but a lady wrote me and said that somebody was making a big noise about Mike Hoggard online, and she was watching this video called Mike Hoggard Exposed. Mike Hoggard Exposed. We're going to expose Mike Hoggard. So she watched it. She's going, I wonder who this Mike Hoggard is. Sounds bad. So she went and watched some videos by me. And she said, okay, I think I get who now is the heretic here. And they've been watching this ever since. And so I have tried to build over the years a reputation. A reputation that if I say it, it is from the Word of God. Now, a lot of people make that claim. A lot of people make that boast and so on. And everybody's got their opinion about everything in the world and they express that online. But when it comes to the things that come out of this church or things that I say... I try to make sure that what I'm saying is as close to the Word of God as anybody can possibly be. Give more of the Bible and less of the speaker. That's, that's our motto. That's how we run here. And if people are going to say things about me or people are going to say things about this church, on which really, if they say things about me, that's one thing I usually let it go. When they start saying stuff about you guys, that's when I come unglued. Because, number one, you're my friends and you're my family. And I don't let people attack the people of this church and call you guys names, which they have. When they do that, that's when I sort of take exception to it. Amen? But I figured the same thing rule applies to you as it does to me. All they have to do is monitor us and watch us and watch our works. And what we do will manifest who's right and who's wrong. Amen? So while they speak against us, at some point they are going to be ashamed at what they... Either we're going to be ashamed because of what we did or they are going to be ashamed because of what they said in the day of visitation. You know what day that is? That's when the Lord appears in the air. And I've got it figured that when the Lord appears, either we are going to be in the air with Him... And they're going to be embarrassed because they're going to be going, Gulp, how come we're not going up? Or they're ones who were right all along and we're going to be going, uh, we should have followed them instead of Mike Hoggard. I hope that you follow the word. Amen? Now, watch this. Verse 13. Here we go. This is where it's going to get interesting. Verse 13. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free, and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. Now I'm going to just kind of pick your brain for a little bit. And you have my permission to pick mine here in a minute. What do you think this is saying? What is your opinion that this is teaching when it says, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake? What, is, what do you think that means? Ryan, what do you think that means? When Daniel was in that kingdom, he had all kinds of stuff, mm -hmm. false stuff, sorcery, uh, and, I mean, all this stuff's going on around him. Right. Daniel, we didn't see Daniel being malicious and causing problems. He just went along and did what God told him to do. 
God used him. And, and then when, when it finally, when they set a trap for him to, uh, to try to snare him and get him to go against God, he didn't. He just kept straight. Very good. Daniel chapter 1. Turn there. I'm glad you brought that up. Okay? Daniel chapter 1. And I'm not, I don't have a particular place here in mind, but I want you to open to Daniel chapter 1. And the gist of this is, is that Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, four men. Think about that number four. Because there's always going to be a battle in this world, four gospels against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness, high place. That's where that every battle that's going on right now deals with these four coming at each other. Amen? So you've got four men that are going to serve God. You've got Nebuchadnezzar. You've, these guys have been taken out of their homes and brought into a land by force. And they've been chosen now to be like Hitler's youth. Okay, think about that. That Nebuchadnezzar's Hitler. And they've been chosen to be part of Hitler's youth program. We're going we're gonna to feed you guys with the king's wine and the king's meat, which was pork and ham and bacon and pork chops and ribs and all that stuff. And we're going to try to prove to you that the king's way and the king's lifestyle is better than anybody's. Now here's Daniel and these three young men. Four young men. And when the king's decree that comes down, you don't see them going, we do what that cute stupid king said. We don't, we don't live for him. We live for Jesus. They did not have an attitude. They did not say, well, we're not going to do anything. How's that? You can kill us if you want. That is not what they did. They beseeched the eunuch who was over them. They went to their overseer. And they said, we're not here to cause trouble. But our Lord prohibits us from eating that meat and from drinking that wine. We're not, we just, that's what our Lord tells us not to do. And the eunuch over them saying, uh, look, I got a responsibility here. And if you guys are not well-shaped in a matter of a few days, it's going to be me that's going to, they're going to come down on. And so he said, why don't you give us 10 days? We'll drink water and eat pulse, and then the rest of these guys can eat whatever they want, but I promise you in 10 days' time, God is going to honor our commitment to him, and we're going to show ourselves better than all of the rest of these guys. And the guy said, you're on 10 days. They said, prove us now herewith. No attitude. They were trying to reverence the king and yet not violate their responsibility to God. Now, if you're someone who seeks peace in life, often there can be a situation where you can honor earthly government while honoring God's law, if you're one that seeks peace. Let me just say this. I am not a Christian anarchist. And let me explain that. The people who are going to come against me for teaching this, they've already, they've already done this. Because several years ago, I preached Romans 13 because I was preaching out of the book of Romans. And I got to Romans 13, and I preached it the way the Bible says it, and I got in trouble. I got people accusing me of working for the Illuminati. I got people accusing me of being on a government payroll. That when the FEMA trucks come by and round us all up, I'm going to say, hey, everybody, get in that wagon. Let's go to the detention centers. They've got me believing that. Or th they, they think that I teach that, and I don't. And I want to make this real simple. And you, you look in the Bible. I'm going to make this real simple. Obey man's authority as long as man does not require you to violate God's law. But, and here's the expression I hear. But Mike, don't you know that they're all in the Illuminati and they're all Masons and they're all secret societies and they're all evil people and we're not told to obey evil people. That is not true. It's not true. Nebuchadnezzar is the example here. They did not say to the king, we're not doing what you said, and that's just all there is to it. 
We're free, sovereign citizens. We don't play with anybody's commandments here on this earth. I've run into these people and seen these people online that won't get a driver's license, won't get a social security number, drive around on public roads thinking that no government is over them. If they want to think that, that's fine. Just stay off of our roads. Amen? <laughs> stay off government roads. But anyway, I'm not that kind of anarchist. I will tell you that if a cop pulls you, turns lights on behind you, you pull over. Because that's legal and that's right. If he asks you to do something that is a violation of God's law, you say no. But just because, and let me just say this, there are very few King James only Christian fundamentalists in law enforcement. Very few. There's some, but there's very few. What are the chances that you're going to get pulled over by a King James only Christian fundamentalist? Not very likely. Does that mean that you still have to pull over? Yes. Because as long if you were breaking the speed limit or you're driving with no driver's license and no license plate and your car has not had an inspection, if you think that you don't follow their laws, then fine. Go to some place where their laws don't cover and stay off of their roads. And don't take their money. Anyway. Uh, Daniel is the example here. And Daniel, let's see here. Daniel chapter, what was it? Where was it that they made the agreement? The guys were spying on Daniel and they saw him pray three times a day. Daniel 6. Daniel chapter 6. They spied on Daniel. They didn't like him because Daniel was exalted above them. And they said, well, you're going to get rid of him. So they watched Daniel pray three times a day. And they went to the king and they said, King, there's people in your, in your rule and reign that are bowing to other gods other than your gods. Why don't you make a decree that says anybody praying to any other god other than the god of the king gets thrown into the lion's den. The king said it's a good idea. So he wrote it in the law of the Medes and Persians, which means it cannot be altered even by the king. And so they wait. Daniel knows this law is in effect. What does Daniel choose to do? Daniel does what he does every day. He opened his window, and right in front of the window, he bows and he prays to his God three times a day, just like he always did. Now, he's not waving a, a banner that says, don't tread on me. Okay? He's not trying, he's, he's not trying to play anarchy here. Anarchy means nobody rules you. Okay? Nobody, no government rules over you. That's an anarchist. That is also one of the foundational principles of Wicca. Wicca has 13 rules. Imagine that. Rule number six is we recognize no earthly hierarchical authority. In other words, Wiccans recognize that nobody tells them what to do. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, okay? And stubbornness is idolatry. And there's people out there who are both rebellious and stubborn in that they think that because they quote-unquote live for God, that that excuses them from living under man's laws. And it doesn't. Show me the scripture that says that. And I'm showing you 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 13, Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for whose sake? For the Lord's sake. Whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers. You know who that is, don't you? That's the cops and the, and the, the people who bear the sword. And for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness. And let me say this. Some of the very people who don't want the government monitoring everything they do are the people who are breaking the laws, especially online laws. 
And they think that because they say God every now and then and they, they talk about a Bible every now and then that they don't have to obey man's rules. And they don't want the government monitoring them. The reason why is they're breaking laws online. And they're going to be the fiercest opponents out there. They're the ones who want to download movies and music and stuff like that illegally. And they don't want the government to know they're doing it. Okay? That's who that is. Or, worse, downloading worse things on the internet and they don't want the government to know about it. Those are the ones who are going to be the most vocal about all these online laws and online issues and things like that. Okay? So anyway, but anyway, Daniel submitted to the ordinance in that he turned himself in. They went and got him. He said, okay, yeah, I broke the law. How do you plead? Guilty. They put him in the lion's den. How did that turn out? It was funny because the law said he's to be thrown into the lion's den. The law didn't say he had to die in there. He fulfilled the law, did he not? They raised him back out. Now we throw the guys that made the law in there. Okay? But very clearly in the scriptures, he's telling you, submit to earthly authority as long as that authority does not require you to break God's law. Um, let me give you another biblical example of this. In the book of Acts, they took Peter and James and John, Peter and John, and they were preaching Jesus. And they arrested them. And they said, we don't want you preaching this Jesus anymore. And it was Peter that said, whether we should obey you or not, we don't know. We just, we just know that we have to go and tell everybody that we know about Jesus Christ. And so they were beaten and they were sent out. What did the disciples decide to do? Did they decide that they better not preach Jesus anymore because they don't want to be arrested and thrown in jail? They said, we ought to obey God rather than man. And so they went everywhere preaching Jesus. But they knew that in doing so, that more than likely they were going to be arrested again. Okay? They were willing to take the punishment for serving Jesus. God. And it was a clear cut case where man was trying to get them to do something against the wishes and the commands of their Lord. Their Lord said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every living creature. And that's what they were doing. Uh, take your Bible, turn to um, Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews 13. I have it up on the screen here. Verse 16, the Bible says, But to do good and to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. Verse 17, Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves. Now again, there, is, there are people who have an anarchist ideology. And it's not just government, it's even in the workplace. They are rebellious and unruly people. They think that any law, by any law that's managed by a lost person, they don't have to follow. They think that because um, the people in the government are all in the Illuminati and they're all in secret societies and they're all out to get us, they think that because they're lost and they don't serve God in the government, then they don't have to obey the government. And that is not what the scriptures say. It is not what the Bible says. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. So that means, number one, on the government level, local government, number one. Number two, if you work at McDonald's, the manager at McDonald's is over you. And if they say, do this, you have to do this. And if they say, do that, you have to do that. Now, if they say, as you're counting the money, slip 20 in my desk every so often, do you do that? No. If they say, hey, you're nice looking, baby, you don't have to obey that one either. Amen? That's a violation of God's law. 
but in so much as you work at McDonald's and the manager at McDonald's tells you that you have to do this and you have to do this and you have to do this, if you want to work there, you have to do this and you have to do this and you have to do that. And the Bible teaches you to do it with a good attitude. Because lost, listen, lost people see the Christian right, I'm using my left hand, the Christian right, they see the Christian fundamentalists as thinking that they're better than everybody else. The Baptists and the Pentecostals and everybody, they think they're better than everybody else and they think that because they go to church twice a week that they can get by with everything that everybody else has to be under. And it's not true. The Bible never says that. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls. It's they that must give account. That manager at McDonald's, does he, does he have a boss? Sure he does. He's got a boss over him, a manager, district manager. That, dis that owner, that district manager, do they have a boss over them? Sure, it goes all the way to the corporate. They have people who are over them, and they're watching over them. They have rule over them. They're watching for their... Listen, here's, here, watch this now. Authority equals protection. When you're under authority... You are under that authority's protection. The manager has been trained at where you work. The manager has been trained to do things by the book. Um, you worked at Walmart. I guarantee you in the back, they've got books that are like this thick on procedures on how to do everything in that store, don't they? Okay? Every, and that's, that's just Walmart. McDonald's has got them. Every place in the country where they hire somebody nowadays, there's book after book after book of procedures that outlines every little thing that everybody is supposed to do. What is that? That's protection. Because if you're working at Walmart and you did something by the book and something went wrong, in the trial, they're going to ask you, how did you take care of this? I did it by the book. So then you're off the hook. It's going to be somebody else that's going to hang for it. It's not going to be you. It's protection. Uh, turn to Psalm 91. You ought to see me, believe it or not, I'm shaking up here. And it's not my blood sugar either. Okay? I know that people are going to listen to this and they're going to write me emails. Or they're going to make comments on YouTube. Psalm 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will save the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. When you put yourself under God's authority, you're putting yourself under God's protection. God will protect you. God will cover you. He'll take his wings like a, like a bird, and he'll cover you, and he'll protect you, and he will keep you safe from anybody that's trying to get to you. If you climb out of that protection, out of that authority, you're on your own. Okay? You are on your own. You're exposing yourselves to the wolves and to everything else that wants to get at you. When you place yourself under authority, you're putting yourself under protection. Back here in Hebrews 13... Submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Even, I, I think it was Paul that wrote Hebrews, even Hebrews is telling you, in the business context, that when you follow the rules and the guidelines, it's profitable to you. Amen? Follow the rules. Do what you're told. In so long as it doesn't violate God's will. 1 Timothy chapter 2, turn there. 1 Timothy chapter 2. See, I'm trying to be real careful how I say this. I exhort, 1 Timothy 2, 1. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions and giving of thanks be made for who? How many men? All men. 
even for the neighbors that you don't like. <laughs> even for the neighbor that steals your Wi-Fi. My neighbor figured out my Wi-Fi password and stole, and I know it because we were on a limited plan, and in one night he used all of it. And I had it figured it was the kid up the street. He needs Jesus. Amen? Prayer, supplications, intercessions, giving you thanks be made for all men. Number t Verse 2, for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Now let me say this. I am very thankful that nobody tried to kill Barack Obama while he was in office. That would have started World War III right here in America. I would like to live a quiet and peaceable life. I would like to be at peace with every man. And as much as we're able to be, I would like to be at peace with people. I would like to be at peace with YouTube. YouTube lets me put my videos on their server, free of charge, no money, but they have a set of rules that I have to follow. And the people, have you ever seen somebody say, I got kicked off of YouTube for what I'm saying? Have you ever seen people like that? They didn't get kicked off of YouTube for what they were. They got kicked off of YouTube because they were using copyrighted stuff. They're violating YouTube's rules. But they want you to think that their message was so big and powerful and against the Illuminati that YouTube got scared and kicked them off. Don't, don't fall for it. Okay? So far, I don't think that I've ever been in anything that I've ever said in any sermon, Pastor Mike Online, whatever. I don't think there's been one time that YouTube said, you know what? All your stuff, Mike Hoggard, we don't want that out there, so we're going to kick you off. They've never done that. I started following the rules. If you remember, when I was doing Pastor Mike Online, I was playing like uh, Southern Gospel songs, and then to start to end the program, I was playing the theme from the blob. You remember those days? I quit doing that. I quit doing that. I bought some music online and got a license, and I have the license to play that music now. But if I was playing the blob theme, YouTube flags it. And if I keep doing it, they kick me off. So which is important to me? To play the blob theme at the end of my show or to have the freedom to say what I want to say on my show? That's what's important to me. Not the fact that I can't play this copyrighted music. Okay? So I quit doing it. Why? Facebook the same way. Facebook... When we stream our service on Facebook, they keep the whole service on there. As long as we're just singing, congregationally singing, and not playing copyrighted music that's owned by somebody else. YouTube even flat, you know when I played with Southern Rays, their Beethoven's Fifth Symphony? Okay, YouTube flagged it. And I, and I, I did write back and I said, uh, excuse me. Uh, the reason why that's on there, if you look at it, it's me playing with the people who own the music. They gave me the permission to sit up there and play with them. Deal with it! Okay, I haven't heard back on them from that. But anyway, there are some people out there who are just disobedient. And it doesn't matter what rule it is, they're going to break it. And they're going to think that God gave them an unction to break these rules. And that's not true. So he says, pray for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. Which is more important to us? Starting a revolution? Starting a Second Amendment fight back? Or leading people to Jesus? That's what that says. Now, I also take the position that this government is not going to 
haul off and try to confiscate our weapons without a fight. I don't have to promote the fight. The fight's coming because the people in this country are not going to yield over their weapons, their arms. It's not going to happen. Amen? Okay? So I don't, I don't have to just all the time promote and try to, like Alex Jones, try to get people to start a fight. He's trying to pick a fight. Okay? It's the way I see him. I, don't, I may be wrong, but that's the way I see him. What's more important to me is the gospel going out and people being saved by the word of God. So I'll follow the rules. I'll do what YouTube tells me to do. But th th so far, I have not seen anything on YouTube that says, I can't say what this Bible says. There is no rule against that. There's not a rule against that on Facebook. There's not a rule against that on YouTube. There's not a rule against that on Sermon Audio, thank God. Okay? There's not a rule against that right now, per se, on the Internet. I can preach what this book says and do it as often as I want to, and so far, no repercussions. Okay? So I play by the rules, because I want a quiet and peaceable life. I want to keep doing what it is that I'm doing. Do not misread into my words here. This is for you people. Do not misread into my words that I think we ought to just lay down and let the world just roll all over the top of us, because I don't believe that. When it comes time to take a stand for this, I'll take that stand. Because that's what's important to me. Amen? I've got more on this. We're going we're gonna to get into Romans 13 and so on. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you the question before we leave. I'm going to ask you the question, okay? Did Moses lead a rebellion against Pharaoh? Okay? Now, I didn't say answer it today. Okay? Since you did, smart boy, you're going to tell us next Wednesday why you said that. Okay? With Scripture. Okay? Make sure he does his homework. Okay? You're going to tell everybody next Wednesday why you said you don't believe that Moses led a rebellion against Pharaoh. Okay? It's real simple, but I'm not going to give you the answer. Okay? Are you up for it? There was a pause like this long. Did you hear that? Yes. Stand to your feet. Don't rebel against me. I said stand to your feet. Don't be rebellious. There's no perfect government, not on this earth. There is no perfect government on this earth. To this date, the Constitution of the United States is still the best government in the world. To this date, it still is. And I have nothing but thanksgiving for, allow, for God allowing me to be raised and live in this country. I don't want a war to start in this country. I want people to be able to settle some of these disagreements in a proper manner. But just know that there's always going to be people out there who are going to try to stir everybody against everybody else. They want to fight. They want a war. I don't want that. Okay? But when it comes to what this Bible says, I'm not going to lay down either. Father in heaven... We thank you, Lord, for meeting with us tonight. We thank you, Lord, for your word. This Bible says things the right way. And its words must be heeded, must be listened to, must be adhered to, must be applied. This Bible is in authority over me. This Bible is in authority over the people of this church. This Bible is in authority over America. Even if most of America doesn't want to recognize it, this Bible is really in charge. It was this Bible that many of our founding fathers based their ideas on. And Father, I thank you for allowing me to live in this country. I thank you, Lord, for freedom. I thank you, Lord, for liberty. 
But Father, we know that liberty is not an excuse to do things that are unrighteous or evil. Father, forgive us for breaking the laws of this country. Forgive us for breaking your laws. Help us, dear God, to be good citizens of heavenly Jerusalem. Help us, dear God, to be good citizens of Jefferson County, good citizens of Missouri, good citizens of the United States of America. And Father, we just pray, dear God, that there's not a war in our country. There's not a big battle. People are going to be killed. It's going to be real. And Father, I want to preach the gospel. But Father, if in my lifetime you require me to stand on what this Bible says, Lord, put it in us to, to do just that, to stand. Thank you, God, Lord, for giving us the Holy Spirit and for giving us the Word of God. Help us to get it settled in our mind, what we'll do, what we'll live for, what we'll fight for. Thank you, Lord, for this book. Settles all the arguments. Thank you for it in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.